Hi everybody. When working with modern high-level programming languages, like let's say JavaScript or Python or Java, we don't even have to think about memory management. All that memory management and handling is taken care of for us by either the operating system or the virtual machine or just the programming language's own internals. There will be times though when knowing a little bit about how memory management works will give us a better picture of why certain data structures behave the way they do. And so we're gonna start our look by focusing on arrays, a topic we saw just a few moments ago. We're gonna look at how arrays deal with memory and how they work, and in some cases don't work, to give us a better understanding of their performance characteristics. Now, before I go further, I should let you know that if you want a friendly yet comprehensive look at not just this topic, but on data structures and algorithms in general, my best link book on this topic is just what you need. So you can find it in both physical bookstores and online bookstores, so definitely do check it out. Now, getting back to our topic at hand, I'm not gonna go into detail on memory itself. I'm gonna simplify memory in the series of cells, these rows and columns. So you can see that we have a bunch of rows, a bunch of columns, and each segment of memory is denoted by a green square. And in real life, our memory will never be as clean and as empty as this because every little thing a computer does takes a little bit of memory. It's gonna be filled with various things here and there. And so, you know, an example of it might be that here I have some copy and paste data, here's some application I'm running, and so our memory is gonna be broken up between free and used regions. And it'll never be a very clean kind like, you know, delineation between free and used. There'll be random blocks of memory that are empty, and then there'll be random blocks of memory that are filled with things. It'll, ne it'll often never be a very clean, ordered kind of a story. You know, I can talk about this defragmenting. We've seen that UI from like the 1990s at some point, but I'm not gonna go into that right now. It's too nostalgic and not quite relevant for what we're trying to do here. So the thing about arrays that we talked about earlier is that they need to store their items in adjacent regions of memory, you know, contiguous regions of memory, no gaps in between them, which means that array items can't be jumping between free and used regions. They need an uninterrupted group of cells to operate in. And so for example, let's say we declare an array. We declare an array and inside our memory, some space is allocated for us. So in this case, we can see that seven cells have been allocated for us and it's not gonna be used by any other application. It's just for us. So as we start adding data to our array, you can now see that each of our cells are now populated. You can see that we added five items and so up to seven cells, five items are now fully inside our array. And so as we see working with our array, we can now see we've filled it up completely. We added seven items and all the space allocated to us has now taken place. Now, let's say we want to add one more item. Now, because arrays can't be, a, you know, I can't just take the, an array and then move its content to its next immediate free space, they have to be in contiguous regions. So what it means is that we need to find a region of memory, and when I say we, I mean the operating system or virtual machine, needs to find a larger region of memory that has no gaps in it for the array, and that's what happens. So we add, want to add one more item in the you know, fraction of a microsecond, nanosecond that happens, a new region of memory is allocated for our old array. And before you can even blink an eye, all those content is now copied and moved over to its new location. So the old space array was in is now reclaimed. Now we can use you know, some other application, something else you're doing might take it up. But then our new array is now, I mean our existing array, is now moved to its new location. And the new item we added continues on from where we go. And because we have more space for it, we have more room to spare. Our array now continues to be, you know, have space, we can add things to it, and everything is just fine. Now, the thing to keep in mind is that whether you're arrays, you know, you're moving things in the beginning, moving things to the end, we have to maintain a contiguous region in our array. The index position behind the scenes, you know, for us it's like zero, one, two, three, four, and five. In reality, they're often like, you know, hexadecimal memory addresses that need to be kept in sync as part of what's going on. Luckily, we don't have to see all of that. That's all handled for us behind the scenes, but you can kind of see how this requirement that memory needs to be set in contiguous regions, why our index positions are always reordered to be in contiguous regions. So for example, even though you insert an item in the middle, all of them are shifted over. The shifting is not just because of quirk of the array, it's because it's a representation of how memory behind the scenes is actively managed. And you'll see other data structures where they have different behaviors, where some of these things aren't quite the same when it comes to memory management, and we'll cover those in due time. So if you have any questions about this topic or anything else, do post in the forums. There are a lot of people who are willing to help you out, very friendly community. And of course, like you below this video, you'll see links to all the resources you've seen in this video, but also for just ways of keeping up with all the content I create. And so with that, I will see you all next time.